Good evening, everybody. Thanks uh, for coming to this uh, Cabinet meeting held on Thursday, the 9th of November 2023. Uh, first item on the agenda is, are there any apologies? No, that's, that's jolly good. Uh, item two, declaration of interests by any members? No. Cool. Uh, item three, question time. Uh, item four is any matters uh, referred to the cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules and this report is in the chair of health and well-being scrutiny over to you councillor chris thank you chair i, I like the new informal approach councillor chris that's really good i like that I think we should stick with that, really. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk to this um, recommendation from the Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Um, I do think before considering it that I need to give a little bit of context as to how we actually got here. Now, the, the previous system of allocating um, DFG, Disabled Facilities Grants, uh, used a complex mix of formulae and bids it, uh, submitted by individual local authorities. And the DCLG would allocate money to the regions using indicators that were derived from the English House Condition Survey and the DWP's data on numbers of people claiming things like attendance allowance and um, disability living allowance. And the regional officers then allocated money to the individual authorities on the basis of their bids and other local data. So that meant that the previous system was overly complex. Um, it lacked transparency and it lacked consistency. And I think that's important when thinking about the system we now have. And it produced outcomes that were by and large seen as being extremely volatile and changeable. They were not necessarily re um, representative of the relative needs of an area and they produced large fluctuations that made it very difficult to forward plan. So the aim in devising the new system we now have was to produce a methodology that was much simpler, fairer, and more transparent. And that would also enable the DCLG to derive the allocations directly without involving regional offices and the complexities that brought with it. Now the current model we have, the current allocations model we have is, is in large part determined by the number of claimants of disability related benefits. The proportion of the population aged 60 or over, the proportion of people on means tested benefits and the proportion of the housing stock that is not owned by the local authority. Now this allocations model is a blunt instrument. And I think what that brings with it is a loss of sensitivity in data. And our experience is that a loss of sensitivity in data frequently triggers the law of unintended consequences. And I think that's what we've seen here. So some boroughs have been allocated more funding than they need and they're not able to spend it, whilst others, such as Tamworth, are not receiving enough funding to cover the needs of their residents. So the recommendation to the cabinet here tonight is that we continue to lobby government about um, the funding allocations and the way that they are calculated. But I think whilst doing that, Chair, I thoroughly support the recommendation whilst doing it, we acknowledge that there were serious difficulties with the previous system as well. And I don't think yet, although whether this is better than the previous one or not, I'm not sure, um, but we're not yet at a system which works for everybody. So the recommendation is to continue to lobby government on how funding is to be allocated on the needs of the district rather than on some general formula, including four broad indicators. So I'd recommend um, that the, you adopt um, the recommendation from Health and Wellbeing Committee. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Um, I agree, um, you know, it's always good to review what we had in the past. Is it still relevant? Is it still accurate? Can we do better in the future? And it's always the devil is in the detail when we make changes. So thank you for your hard work and what you've done today and bringing it to this committee. Uh, I'd now like to open it to questions. Councillor Thomas. 
Councillor Thomas. <laughs> um, yeah, fully support it. Um, we, we've seen during every budget process, we're seeing it this year, we're going to see it in more detail in the next few months. So this has a massive impact on our, our budget. We don't get our share, so um, fully support it tonight. Thank you. Councillor Summers? Yeah, um, if you look at the figures, it's astonishing that we um, still don't get what we should have. Um, and other authorities are literally rolling in the money um, when it comes to this. Um, so I wholeheartedly support it as well. Uh, it's not like they even claw the money back to give it to those who still have outstanding uh, amounts that they need. Um, so yeah, I, I can't uh, support this enough. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, I concur with that. You know, we need to get our fair share, and however we knock on the doors to get our fair share for the town, is 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 got to be good, good for good for all of us. Um, so hopefully, you know, London Town will be listening, uh, and the Labour Group will be supporting those efforts, Chair. So I'm happy to move that. Second. All those in favour? To the contrary. Okay. Thank you. Right. The next items on um, on our agenda are actually uh, to be excluded from the press and public. So I will um, read out the uh, statement that we have to do legally, in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangement, meetings and access. To to Information, England regulation, Regulations 2012 and Section 100A, brackets 4, of the Local Government Act of 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business, on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 and part 1 of the Schedule 12A of the Act, and that the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest of disclosing the information to the public. At this time the agenda is published and no representations have been received to this part of the meeting to be open to the public. Happy to move it. Second Chair. All those in favour? 